I'm Mike DePama, Senior Channel Development Manager with Data. Clearly the way that businesses are communicating has changed once we entered this COVID-19 world that we've been living in. And so whether you're working remotely, whether there's a hybrid, maybe you're still in the office, most of the folks that you're talking to are in different locations. And so there's a lot of great technology out there that has allowed us to do that. It's fantastic. Um, where would we be without that technology? These uh, are ways that we're having meetings now. We're having, I mean, everybody listening probably has been Zoomed to death. You're sitting in meetings via Zoom, via Microsoft Teams, wherever that might live. And this is how we're meeting, whether it's internally or with you know, vendors or, or clients or whatever you're, you're working with. And that's how we're collaborating as well. That's where a lot of these things, the shared screens, we're working on different projects together, maybe a PowerPoint presentation, maybe you're working on, in a Google Doc that's being edited by multiple people. These tools are great and they're allowing us to collaborate. And so thank goodness we're in a world where that exists. This is how we're chatting now. And not only just chatting via you know actual work uh, chatter, but what about just the, the old time you know, coffee break chatter, the old time water cooler chatter, chatter as it used to be called, right? A lot of that is occurring as well and that's great. Whether that's in a chat forum, whether that's in Slack or something else, that's very important. Studies have shown that those, that chatter is very important just to have and for morale and all the rest. And then we have our conferences. Uh, we're seeing that on the, on the large industry conference side. There's a lot of great platforms. This is allowing people to go in and work and this is really where we are. But how do the businesses adapt to this? And how do we respond to this new uh, landscape? There's data being saved here. How do we protect that data? We've seen a huge spike, particularly in Microsoft Teams. The numbers have skyrocketed. And that shows you that this is here to stay. Businesses have made that investment. They understand that this is something they need to do, whether it's that platform or another platform. Folks are making that investment. The problem is we're still seeing some, some threats out there. Um, we are seeing the increase in threats that are trying to exploit the fact that people are working remotely on potentially unprotected devices or unprotected networks and understanding that there's all these collaborative tools that might not be protected, even something simple like password protection or all the rest. So understand that you're being attacked. Just because you're in this collaboration tool and the data's all in the cloud does not mean that the criminals won't find that and try to exploit that. They will follow the data wherever it lives. And so understanding that is critical. Um, we see attacks on O365. The platform is great, but we, the criminals understand ways to do that. For years, basically, all you saw were attacks on on-premise Windows servers, right? And why was that? Not necessarily because they are the least protected, but because there was so much low-hanging fruit. 97% of businesses worked on a Windows on-premise server. So the criminals are just gonna keep attacking that until they, they dry that up. But now as people start to shift into different collaboration tools, the criminals will follow that data as well. So you need to make sure that that data is being backed up. Anywhere business data lives, it needs to be backed up. Go and open your user agreement for O365. They have what's called the shared responsibility model. Well, they will protect the integrity of their cloud, but that data is the responsibility of the tenant, which is now you. And so they have that. They will tell you that right in their user agreement. Go to their forums, they will, they will highlight that as well. Same thing goes with G Suite. You will see the same thing. You will see that they have the shared responsibility model. Now with O365, um, when you look at their data retention policies, there's a reason why you need to have a third party backing that data up. Go have a conversation with somebody from Microsoft. They will have that discussion, that the data needs to be stored because they do not guarantee that that data will be recovered if there's just an end user deletion or you are attacked, things are encrypted and all the rest. So it's very important to make sure that that data is backed up. And that goes for G Suite as well. They're gonna have the same types of policies. They're not gonna tell you that that data is going to be able to be recovered in the form of an attack. So you need to have the conversation of, okay, this is extremely important business data. How do I protect that data? And there's great ways to go out and do that. So that goes for the entire platform, whether it is Teams, wherever data lives needs to be backed up. It's not just emails. How about calendars, contacts, uh, SharePoint, all the rest, those need to be backed up and it's very critical. So this SaaS data is still vulnerable. Uh, you go and you hear stories about ransomware in the city of Atlanta and Baltimore and all these servers that are being attacked. But there's a new variant out there called Ransom Cloud. And we had a, a gentleman by the name of Kevin Mitnick, who if you Google him, it's a pretty cool story uh, in hindsight. One of the most wanted uh, cyber criminals in the world back in the 90s, actually on the FBI's most wanted list. He was caught, went to jail, came back. If you, if you like, catch me if you can, that type of story. That's really what happened here. He works with the good guys now. And he did a recording that I can give you a copy of if you want um, that shows exactly what a ransom crowd attack looks like. 
he created the virus just to demonstrate that. And what would happen is, you know, he's got two laptops up, he'll show you, an email comes in, looks like a legitimate email coming from Microsoft. All you gotta do is upgrade your anti-spam pro. Here you go, just, uh, you know, click on this link and we'll upgrade that for you. And then once you click on that link, every single email is now encrypted. And if you have admin access, every single email within the domain can now be encrypted. And the only email you could open up is the one from Kevin with the pretty red screen that says, okay, you want the uh, encryption key? Pay me some money in Bitcoin and I'll go ahead and do that. Same exact look and feel that we saw from the, the ransomware criminals on the on-premise stuff. So everywhere that business data lives, it needs to be protected because they are going to find it. So talk to somebody about SaaS protection. Have somebody come in and talk to you. You might be well protected, but without a second set of eyes, how do you really understand that you are protected? SaaS data needs to be backed up and it's extremely critical.